we'll see how it goes. So you all can hear me? You're live. Okay. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the personal narrative writing rubric. And this rubric we're going to use is the fourth grade star writing rubric. I've um, provided you with some papers. Uh, the first thing that you should have is the writing rubric that goes from accomplished to very limited. And it's color-coded for you. Thanks to Elena Morris. She made this. And then you will have, for those of you in one-way dual or two-way dual language classrooms, I have Spanish samples. And they go from a one to a four. I believe there's two samples each. And then the people in uh, mainstream for ESL classrooms, there's the ones that go from one to a four. And I have added a little page here. If you open it up, and it says goal. And um, that's added. I added that today. And then um, the, the one on the, the back side, I'll get to it in a minute. It said score point three, but actually it's a score point four. When we finish today, I will send you these email. I will send you these um, documents so you will have them, as well as the PowerPoint if you so want to use it and go back to it. Um, but we're going to go over these different samples. We call them anchor papers because looking over a rubric is not enough. It's being able to see how does it go with the rubric? How does it go with the descriptors that we have? I've also included a, a copy of the PowerPoint. And so we shall begin. And there's my cat, Sammy. And what's it all about? So what's all this rubric, what's all this rubric language about? You, your campus will or maybe has already taken a writing sample. And then we're using the rubric for fourth grade, for third, fourth, and fifth. Second grade has a different rubric um, based on the needs of second graders. But the levels that we're going to focus on, the descriptor that TEA uses is very limited. That's a one. So you can see that, very limited. That's a one. Basic is a two, satisfactory is a three, and accomplished is a four. Now, where do we want our kids to be? Where would you want your kids to be in your classroom? You want them to be accomplished, right? And if not accomplished, well, let's be satisfactory. Let's be between us. Right? But now we have to ask ourselves, okay, I have these kids since August. I've worked my magic. I've worked really, really hard with them. We've had about eight weeks of school. Where would they fall? Where would the majority of my kids fall? And as, as accomplished, satisfactory, basic, or very limited. I want you to think about that because the rubric that we're going to use is a rubric that we use throughout the year. And it's the same rubric that the people at TA will use when they score your writing. And so consider that today when we're looking at this. Some of your kids today might be able to might be a basic. And that's what we have a benchmark for. Okay, they're here today. Where are they going to be in December? Where are they going to be in January? Where are they going to be in March and April? At the end of the year, where would they be? It's a constant growth. Now, I would hate to see students that maybe are considered basic today and then December go to very limited. What we're looking for is growth. And rarely do you see that. Rarely do you see that. So how do we know what each one of those levels means? That's what we're going to talk about today. So if you look at very limited, that's a descriptor they're using for star. What does it mean? That their writing is not, it's, it's limited. It's low quality. Okay? And so when we look at it, it's going to be organized according to your rubric. You have your rubric in front of you too. It's organized into three sections. Organization and progression being one. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. Okay? The next one is development of ideas. There's subsets to that. And the last one is use of language and conventions. So let's look at organization and progression. And it's the progression of ideas. If a student received a score point one, what does that mean? Well, as you look at the language of it, I'm going to come move over here. The form or structure of the narrative is inappropriate to the purpose or the specific demands of the prompt. What does that mean? They didn't write about what they were asked. They didn't write about what they were asked, huh? They don't have the elements of the narrative. Okay. The, so 
structure the narrative is inappropriate. The narrative is inappropriate. Okay. So maybe they wrote in expository fashion. Could be. Or maybe they didn't address the prompt. Or maybe they didn't exactly. Or maybe they did address the prompt, but they used it many different ways. For example, mm -hmm. the prompt that, that we're going to see the samples for okay. today are from what was released from the state, and it's right about a time you discovered that you could do something or discover that you learned something, something like that. And maybe they wrote about a time that they did something, but it has no connection to learning or it could be, or they could talk about one day and then talk about another day and talk about another day, but it's not connected. And we'll, have, we'll talk more about that. The writer uses organizational strategies or literary devices that are only marginally suited to the narrative task. Or they're inappropriate or not evident at all. So the organizational strategies aren't there. And if they are, they barely can see any. The narrative presented in a random or illogical way. In sequence. Yeah. That sequence. Right. Hard to follow. Mm -hmm. The writer is not able to convey a sense of experience. Okay, we're going to look at what some of those ones and what those would be in that with that descriptor. Okay, let's look at the second descriptor. Many of the details do not contribute to the narrative. The writer's lack of focus on the specific personal experience weakens the unity and coherence of the narrative. Lack of focus. And that sort of goes with your random and illogical, mm -hmm. right? The writer's narrative presentation is weak. Repetition or wordiness sometimes causes serious disruptions in the storyline. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at serious disruptions. At other times, the lack of transitions or sentence-to-sentence -sentence connections make one or more part of the narrative unclear difficult to follow. So having all of those said, having said all of those things, you're going to see they're ra random and logical, not fall inappropriate to the purpose. Details do not contribute to the narrative. The presentation is weak. And that's what we, we, we're talking about on the score point one. Now let's look for development of ideas. Read that over. You have a, the same thing if you uh, would read yours over. And I would like you to, as you're reading it, tell me some words that jump out at you. You can use what I have at the PowerPoint or what you have. So you're looking at development of ideas. There's two bullets there. Read them, and then we'll talk about what are the things that, that jump out at you. on you, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. that's going to get a one, even though the rest mm -hmm. of it might be. That's what we're talking about in this, mm -hmm. this one area. So they, it's, it's believable. Is it believable? If it's vague, if it's confused, if it's inappropriate, looking as, as a connection to the prompt as well. Use of language conventions. I'm going to read the first bullet, and I'd like you to, t to let me know what words stand out for you. The writer's word choice may be vague or limited. It reflects little or no awareness of the narrative purpose. The word choice impedes the writer's ability to, re to relate the experience clearly. So what are some thoughts about that, that descriptor? <coughs> what are some words that keep popping out over vague. and over? Vague. Vague or limited. Inappropriate, limited. Right? And it's, it doesn't go with the narrative response. 
for the narrative purpose. So the word choice is very important, but it's vague or limited. And then the next one, sentences are simplistic, awkward, or uncontrolled, weakening the effectiveness, effectiveness of the narrative. What, what jumps out at you there? Uncontrolled. Uncontrolled? What do you think that means?
And, you know, some spelling words, invented spelling, you can tell what it is, you can say what it is. If I don't know what it is, I'm not going to try to pretend that. Or I'm not, I, I might try to sound it out, and you'll see, does that disrupt my fluency? Okay? If there's no period, I'm not going to pause. All these I will try not to. Okay? Because whenever you, you have sentence boundary problems, you, you're pretty much asthmatic as you read through it. You'll be out of breath because there's no place to stop. So this is the first one. I was five years old. I was going to learn how to ride a two-wheeler. My brother taught me how to ride one at the park. My mom took us to the park, and my mom was pushing me while I'm on the bike. Then my mom let me go, and then I was riding it by myself, and my brother was waiting for me so I can ride with him wherever he goes with his bike and wherever I go on my bike. When I was, how old is that? Nine. Nine. I got a bike on Christmas <clears throat> Eve because my other bike was too little for me, so my grandpa bought it for me, and I hugged him. I still have my bike at home. I ride my bike at the park, and I let my brother ride it because his bike is rusted, and my dad threw it away. So me and my brother take turns on the bike. And I believe that's the whole thing. Yeah, I'm going to come back to it. So as we're looking through it, what are some things from organization progression of ideas that you would say or it would fall into? What makes it a one? What makes it a one for development of ideas, use of language? Any of those categories. Why would this you consider this to be considered? Why would you consider this to be a 4.1? Talk in your groups. Talk in your groups first, and then we'll share out. Using that group. discovered that you could do something or that you learned something. That was the prompt, right about a time. And he wrote about several times. So where would that fall in the rubric for you to look at? If he wrote about several times, where would that, uh, on a one, where would that go? Random or logical way? Okay. I think it's... Uh, inappropriate to the purpose or specific demands of the prompt. Mm -hmm. Not inappropriate that he wrote about riding a bike because that works, but mm -hmm. riding, and he wrote about several things within that. And it said right about a time. And it is haphazard. It's, it's what's, what word did you use? Logical? Hard to follow? Okay. His development of ideas, what do you think about that? Very limited. Very limited? He did develop some of them, but because of the organization of it, and as Carolyn was saying, the progression of ideas, going from one to another, you get to it. And then, his word choice, I said it would be either, I think it's basic, the word choice. Um, for age, you know, we're talking about age appropriate, okay? But he has, um, he has some punctuation there. I wouldn't consider that severe. I, I don't really consider it, it, it took away from my fluency when I was reading it, but the other aspects make it a one. When you're looking at your students' writing, where is, when you're thinking about it, they might be, have in, in certain areas, oh, that, this could be considered basic, but the majority <coughs> is in the other. So you have to look at it that way. They do have, yeah, every piece of writing, or I would say most pieces of writing have really, they have that characteristics, and they might be on the border, so you can see from, from one or the other. 
they're going to have some positives. But they're also going to have some challenges. And this child has some challenges in staying on topic and staying focused in the coherence of it. So wait a minute. What about a time, one time? And that would be a good comforting point for the child. Because it has a sequence, but you're like, wait a minute, where are you now? You moved it around. It, it just switched too quickly. So let's look at the next one. This is considered as 4.1. I'll read it out loud, as is. And I believe this is all the slides that we have. Yes. Okay? And I would like to say, first of all, the length of it does not necessarily always tell us it's going to be a score point one. Some kids could write really small on those lines and have uh, maybe a possibly basic. When I see this, I'm thinking development of ideas. But I don't know. I have to get into it to see what's there. But it has potential. Every piece of writing has potential to become better. The first time I discovered that I... I am good at playing soccer I, when I was four. I was fu it was fun to play because I was good at playing it. I love to play soccer with my mom, dad, and sisters because it is fun to do a cop to seven. Cop, I don't know what that is. It is a, it is a little hard to play, but when the Odra team make you fall, it is a bow or a pencil. I love to play soccer. I'll read it again. Because <laughs> I'm it's having problems. It's soccer. It's saying sorrow. Okay. It, but I know that they're saying soccer. Right, right. right. And so I'm going to read the way I know it. There's some words in there I can't tell. I don't and know. I don't want to spend, like. Maybe it's a competition. Maybe That's maybe competition. I would never have guessed that. Okay. <laughs> but, and know. the wet is with. So I'm going to read it again. They are, it, kids will have spelling errors, mm -hmm. but is it so bad that you can't figure it out? Yeah. You know, the first time that I discovered I am good at playing soccer, I when I was four, it was fun to play because I was good at it playing it. I love to play soccer with with my mom, dad, and sisters because it is fun to do a cup to them. It is like it is a little. Hard to play when the other team make you fall. It is a foul or a penalty. Oh, I see a penalty. I love to play soccer because of the context. I can figure it yes, out. Yes, or it's been okay. Okay. Now, I, but I had to read through it. Right, Do you right. see how my my fluency was disrupted? Yeah. It was disrupted. Go ahead and discuss according to the rubric what you see that makes it a one. If you so agree. Yeah. and progression of ideas, does the person focus on when they discovered they could do something? Did they, did they write about the, what they discovered they could play soccer? That's their first sentence. The yeah. first that and, and they were talking about it all the way through. So as far as addressing the prompt, kudos for this person. They did do that. Yeah. You can see some positives in this writing. And then when I'm thinking about development of ideas, they talk about their feelings, how they love to play. I think it needs to be developed a lot more. But somebody said something about 